We're here today to learn the basic tasks in Microsoft Outlook. Microsoft Outlook is a uh, application that is designed to organize your emails and uh, also uh, schedule uh, things on your calendar as well as keep up with contacts. Uh, it allows you to organize email and focus in messages that uh, matter the most to you. It allows you to manage your calendar and schedule meetings and appointments with other people. Um, it also allows you to uh, collaborate with files uh, across multiple users and, uh, and be able to share those either as copies or as live links. <clears throat> First thing you'll need to know to do in Microsoft Outlook is to be able to create a new account. Uh, to be able to do that, you just simply go to File and Add Account. Uh, and in most cases, all you'll need to do is enter the uh, email address and password. In a few rare cases, you may have to enter some server information or other connection information. But in most cases, you'll be able to just do that by uh, simply adding your email address and the password and then click finish and it will finish uh, setting up that account and making the connection. To be able to send new emails uh, within Outlook, you're just going to click on the button that says new email. Uh, a, uh, a window will open up with some some uh, field items that you need to fill out. Uh, the first thing will be the to field. That is who you're going to send the email to. Uh, you just simply type in either the user's name or their email address, depending on uh, how it's set up. Um, you'll also see a CC and possibly a BCC field. The CC field stands for carbon copy, and that will send the same email to everyone you add within that CC field. The BCC field is called a blind carbon copy. So for the blind carbon copy, what that does is it also sends a copy of that same email to everyone within that field, but it does not show uh, those people to anyone else within the email. Uh, you'll see a subject field. Uh, in the subject, you're just basically going to assign a title for your email, uh, something that will uh, uh, be meaningful to anyone who goes in and reads that email. And then below that, you'll have the body of the email. And uh, within the body, you'll put all the details of the email, uh, be it a letter or any information that you need to share with someone. <clears throat> One of the first things you're going to want to do when you set up a new email account is to set up your email signature. Your email signature is how all of your emails will be signed by you when you send them out. Uh, typically, that's going to have your name, uh, your position within the company, uh, phone number, email address, uh, physical address, things of that nature. Uh, so to do that, you're going to, um, when you select new email, you know, you're going to select the signature button and then you're going to select new that will open up a window to allow you to create a new signature um, if you already have one uh, you can also edit the signature from that same screen so if you uh, have a, a name change or a position change or a phone number change you can go in and and, and edit those signatures that way uh, you can also select if you want them to be automatically applied to new emails or to replies and forwards as well. <clears throat> Once you have that set up, uh, when you click uh, new email again, uh, those uh, that signature will be applied automatically to the email. One of the other things you can add to your emails is an attachment. Uh, attachments can be um, files or they can be links um, to do that from the uh, uh, the new email or if, uh, if you apply reply or forward an email you just want to click the uh, little paper clip icon or uh, it may say attach file and that will open up a uh, a file directory 
Uh, and one of the first things that you'll typically see with Windows is recent items. So Outlook keeps track of um, anything that you've opened recently. That way, if you just finished working on a file and you want to send that out, it's typically at the top of the list so that you don't have to go through and hunt through your entire computer to find that file. Once you select the file you want, you're just going to click Attach File, and it will attach that to your email. Some other things you can attach, uh, you can attach a business card, which basically has your contact information. You can attach a calendar, which is a calendar that you created that you want to share with somebody. Uh, you can attach uh, web browser locations such as URLs. Um, and or you can attach just uh, any file within your um, within your computer that is available. One of the newer features in Outlook is uh, mentions. So within the body of the email, you can actually mention someone by typing the at symbol followed by the first few letters of their name. And Outlook will automatically give you suggestions of, of contacts within your organization. Uh, once you select the one you want, uh, it will add that user to the two line of the email and also bold their name within the body uh, so that it stands out. If you send an email out that you uh, decide later that you did not want to send out, you can actually recall the email, provided that that email is unread. Uh, unfortunately, with Outlook, once someone reads the email, you can no longer record it or recall it. Um, but uh, as long as it is unread, you, you can still recall that message and it will pull it back from the, the recipient um, and, and basically just uh, not record that it's sent it at all. So to do that, um, you're going to go into your sent items. You're going to double click on the uh, the email and you're going to select file and info. And then you're going to select message resend and recall and recall this message. You'll have two options. You can delete the unread copies of the message, which basically just makes them not exist to anyone who has not already read them. Um, or you can delete the unread copies and replace them with a new message. Um, if you select that, then it will um, allow you to uh, create a new message to replace uh, the old one once it's deleted. Uh, you can also select to tell me if the recall succeeds or fails for each recipient. What that will do is it will generate a report and it will let you know for each recipient whether or not it was able to recall uh, the email or not. And as I said before, once they read the email, it can no longer be recalled. Automatic replies or out of office replies is another feature within Outlook. Um, if you uh, select file and go to automatic replies, uh, you can see all the options um, available to you for that. Uh, if you're going to be out of the office for a few days and you want uh, people to know that if they try to get a hold of you, you can use this feature. Uh, you can set up all the uh, the feature, all the settings for that, um, and we'll talk about that in the next slide. Uh, you can choose the dates that you want that to apply, or you can actually set that manually. So you're going to type in the message that you want to. Uh, to send out to people automatically once they uh, once they uh, try to get a hold of you. Uh, typically something along the lines of I'm going to be out of the office from this date to this date. Uh, if you need anything urgently, uh, please contact someone uh, else within the uh, organization and typically you'll give them that person's contact information to be able to get a hold of someone. Uh, you can also uh, select this to only apply to people within your organization, or you can uh, select it to apply to people both within and without you, outside of your organization. One of the great ways to organize emails within your Outlook is to create folders within your inbox or within any of the uh, mailboxes within uh, Outlook. 
So, um, you know, if, if you have a boss that you want to uh, put all of their emails in, in one place so that you don't have to sort for those later on, you can create a folder with their name on it and you can uh, drag all of their emails as you get them uh, into that folder. Or if you have, uh, you know, some organization that you want to keep all the correspondences between, you can put those in folders, just however you might want to organize those. And all you got to do to put an, uh, an email into the folder is just simply to drag and drop it over. Within the folders, you can actually add a folder to your favorites, and your favorites is located just above the uh, file directory within uh, Outlook on the left-hand side. And it just basically moves that folder to the top and makes it always visible to you. Uh, that way you can access it quicker. <clears throat> you can create rules to autom automate this process. Uh, if you want to automatically uh, send emails from a single recipient to a folder without you having to drag them manually, you can go into rules and create rule. And you can set a uh, condition. So if I want to send an email from John Smith to the John Smith folder, then I would uh, I would create those uh, specifications within within that rule. Or anything with a subject containing this or uh, I, I can move that uh, I can move that to a new folder and select OK. And any new email that comes in with those conditions will be automatically moved over to that folder or will automatically do whatever you told the rule to do to it. You can also select this to run uh, that rule on any message that already exists within the current folder. So if you do that, it will go through your inbox and it will check for any message that meets those conditions and it will automatically apply that rule to them. If you don't select this, it's not going to move anything that already existed. It's only going to apply the rule to new emails that come in. You can create rules manually or you can create them from a template. Uh, if you want to create a rule from a template, you simply go to File, Manage Rules and Alerts, and create a new rule. You'll select a template. Uh, so, for example, to uh, flag a message, if you want to uh, flag a message from someone uh, specifically and, and mark it as a follow-up item, then you can create a rule to do that. You're going to give it a name and a description, and then you're going to click Next. You're going to select the conditions and add uh, any kind of relevant information that you may have on that rule. Uh, you're going to click Next again, and you're going to finish the rule setup. Uh, the name of the rule uh, is, is important so that you know later on um, what that rule was supposed to do. Uh, don't just call them rule number one, rule number two. Uh, later on, that gets confusing. One of the important things to note with Outlook is that a lot of rules will only run when Outlook is on and active. So if you close out of Outlook or shut down your computer, uh, rules that you create within Outlook uh, do not necessarily continue to run. Um, if you do want them to run at all times, uh, within uh, Microsoft 365, the best way to do it is actually to log into the web portal and create the rule there. Uh, then they are not dependent on Outlook to be running in order for those rules to apply. <clears throat> One of the great features of Outlook is actually the calendar management. Uh, and the contact management. So you can keep up with all of your events, both personal and professional. And uh, you can also keep up with all of your contacts, both personal and professional. We'll talk about the, the calendars first. So uh, if you have an appointment, such as like a doctor's appointment or a personal appointment or, or even a, a work uh, appointment that uh, you need to track on your calendar, then you would go into your calendar, select new appointment. You'd give it a title and a location if, if need be. Uh, you'll also select the start times and end times. Um, if it's a meeting, you'll uh, click on invite attendees. 
and uh, you can select anybody that you want to attend that meeting. Once you have all this information entered, you'll click save and close. And if it's a meeting, uh, you will click send and that way it sends that meeting invitation out to anyone that needs it. Before you send that invitation out, there'll be a there's a secondary tab if you're scheduling a meeting called the scheduling assistant. And what you'll do with that is once you've entered all the attendees that you want and you've entered your your time and date for your meeting, you can click on the tab that says scheduling assistant and that will basically show you a very basic view of everyone's calendar. Uh, it, it pretty much only shows you whether or not they're busy or they're free. And uh, this is kind of what it looks like. So there on the left, you'll see uh, all the potential attendees and out uh, in the center, you'll see um, what their schedule looks like. And again, it doesn't tell you any of the details of that schedule. It just says that they're busy or they're free. Um, if they're busy, it shows it in blue. If they're free, it shows in white. So you can look and see before you send out that invitation whether or not they're showing as free in their calendar. Now this is um, it's very important in Outlook that you that you do update your calendar regularly with any anything that you have going on, whether it's personal, professional. Um, that way, when somebody needs to schedule a meeting, uh, they can go in there and they can see the information and it's accurate. That way, you don't have a meeting that you didn't put on your calendar. Uh, and they send out another meeting for that same time and you can't show up. Uh, Outlook will also suggest times and dates uh, that, you, that you can uh, schedule. Once you put all the attendees in there, it will say here are some times and dates that none of those employees have anything on their calendar or currently scheduled. You can share your calendar out with groups or with individuals. Uh, so if you have a, a group within your organization and you want to all share your calendars so that you can see um, maybe details um, about about events that are going on, then you can do that. Um, go into calendar and shared calendar. And you can choose the calendar that you want to share and you can select add. Um, from there, you can choose who you want to share that calendar with, and you can also um, you can select what access level they would have to that. And the access levels are basically uh, it's it's a basic access where it pretty much just shows if you're busy or you're free. There's a detailed access where it will actually show you the information about whatever event is scheduled. Uh, so if you if you have a doctor's appointment on there, it'll actually It'll, it will show everyone that you have a doctor's appointment. Or if you're on vacation, it will show that, that you're on vacation. Um, and the, the third option is actually a the full access, and that would allow other people to make changes to your calendar. So if you have an assistant or someone that you, a partner that you work with, and you want to uh, collaborate between a schedule and both of you be able to add and edit and remove things from that schedule, then that would be the option to choose. When somebody sends you a shared calendar invitation, all you have to do is open that email that it comes in and click accept. And that that calendar will then show up under your shared calendars uh, category on the left hand side. You can view those in a couple of different ways. If you want to view multiple calendars, you can view them um, side by side and that will show each calendar as an individual calendar. Um, listed. Uh, listed horizontally in the in the window or you can view them in overlay mode and basically what that does is it takes all the calendars and groups them into one giant calendar um, good way to uh, to group everything together so if you're looking at what events you have coming up for the week you can see all the calendars uh, together in one place and and not have to check uh, multiple calendars to to see if you're going to be busy or free you can also add internet calendars. Um, internet calendars are basically just uh, calendars saved out in the internet, uh, such as like national holiday calendars. Um, you can you can do that by uh, going into calendars, selecting add, and choosing from the internet. 
and then you will paste the URL for your uh, internet calendar that you've selected. Um, and it's going to ask you a few other uh, follow up questions and then you just click save and that calendar will be added to your uh, to your shared calendars. We can also add contacts in Outlook. Um, if you work in an organization, typically your organization contacts are already in there for you, but you may make personal contacts or contacts outside your organization uh, along the way that you also want to um, have access to and have the information for. So if you want to do that, uh, you'll select the people icon and then select new contact. <clears throat> That'll open up a form for you to fill out all kinds of information for the user. Uh, basically, all you all you really need is a name and an email address, but you're welcome to fill out any of the other information. Um, you know, the more information you put on there, the more um, the more detailed your your contact cards will be. Once you're done filling those out, you can either select save and new, which will save the current contact and it will open up the form again to create another contact, or you can choose save and close if that's the only one you needed to add. You can create contact groups. Uh, these are basically uh, groups of email address or groups of contacts that uh, you want to be able to contact all at once. Uh, without uh, having to send, uh, add multiple email addresses. So if you have a finance group or a administrative group or uh, you know your your team within within Outlook, uh, you can create the people within that group as a contact group. Um, for instance, uh, using the finance uh, uh, scenario, I might create a finance uh, team as a contact group and put all the finance people uh, in that contact group. So then when I open up a new email, all I've got to do is type in finance team rather than the six or seven people that are part of the finance team. And once I type in finance team, it it uh, it actually will uh, that group will show up in the two uh, the two field. Uh, I type the email out and when I hit send, it sends it to everyone within that contact group at the same time. Collaborating with an Outlook is, is also one of the new features that are, is very useful. So uh, within Outlook, I can actually attach a file and um, that allows other people to have access to uh, files that I'm working on. There are two different ways to attach a file. Uh, you can actually attach a copy of a file or you can attach a link to a file. Uh, attaching a copy of a file basically makes a copy of the file that you're working on and sends that copy to another person or a group of people. Um, they would each get a copy of that file that is a separate copy. So any change they make to that file is their own copy of that file. It has nothing to do and no effect on your file. If you send a link to a file, then it creates a link to the same file that you're using. Uh, so if they open that up and make any changes to it, it changes the file that you're working on, which is good in a collaboration scenario. Um, for instance, if you have a spreadsheet where you're entering particip participants user information uh, for an upcoming event, you might have three or four people that need to enter those participants and they can all do that on the same spreadsheet uh, without having to have um, without having to constantly send copies of those files uh, to each other. So one of the things you can do within meetings on in Outlook is you can actually create a, uh, a shared note um, for each meeting. And what that basically does is it opens a program called OneNote within the meeting. And uh, I always kind of think of this as if uh, everyone was sitting around a uh, 
a whiteboard and they all had markers. Uh, so every person can can have access to that one note. They can write on it and it's visible to everyone else within the meeting. It's great for uh, jotting down notes and being able to collaborate notes uh, within a meeting and and sharing them all between each other. Um, there's uh, no need to uh, specially save anything or choose a look for it. It's all within the meeting. It's all just right there and uh, accessible to everybody. So this ends the uh, training for our Microsoft Outlook. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, uh, we'll see you on the next one.